Hello, and welcome to Calming the Chaos, where we present tips, tools, and techniques to help you find peace in a chaotic world. I'm your host, Tracy Canella, licensed mental health counselor at Lokahi Counseling. This channel and the Calming the Chaos podcast is for those who want self-help and education. It's not a substitute for counseling or psychotherapy. So if you like the information, please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. Thanks so much for listening. And now, let the chaos begin. This episode of Calming the Chaos is called Family and Chaos. And I am here with one of my colleagues, Christy Seligman, and her husband, Lester, who I have just met in the green room. And they are both here to tell us about how their family coped with some chaos during the COVID-19 quarantine and thereafter. And we'll have them tell you exactly what, but oh my gosh, when I was reading the exchange of emails between Christy and I about what they've been through, I could not believe the chaos I saw. So of course, I had to have them on our show. And so without further ado, I'm going to bring up Lester and Christy Seligman, and they are going to talk about their family chaos. Welcome, <laughs> Lester and Christy. How are you? Hey. Wonderful. Good hey, to see you. Tracy, good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, before so... we get started talking about chaos, I got to tell you a story. Because I've listened to your podcast and enjoyed your podcast before, um, but Lester hadn't. And so I remember one board meeting, uh, you were talking about how you do live YouTube shows as well. Yeah. And you were saying, hey, if you watch nothing else on this one episode, you got to watch like the tight pants. <laughs> <laughs> the good old Jimmy Fallon skit, right? So that was Lester's introduction <laughs> to your it's podcast. It's a good introduction. It's a very good introduction. Yeah. And so cuts right through the small talk. It really does. Yeah, right. it was very nice. <laughs> so now I have uh, the little icon whenever, like, if, if you text or email, I have a little icon for you that's a pair of pants. <laughs> so you're now Tracy Pants. Tracy Pants. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yes, we were invited to a tight pants challenge by one of our YouTube friends and she did one and I did one and we were the only two that did it. And so Timmy was such a good sport. Uh, and yeah, I cannot believe that's how Lester was initiated to this podcast. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, he but that's it. the way to do it for me because it immediately <laughs> caused me to have a sense of respect and empathy towards you and your wife. And so it was really kind of uh, a very productive way of introducing <laughs> me to you. So that was good, actually. Yeah. I would recommend you doing that more often. So. You know, I am going to have an, a compilation of all of the great highlights of YouTube moments of 2020, <laughs> 2021, and that's going to be in there. And now that you've said that, I'm going to put the tight pants in there because <laughs> nice. it is one of those kind of shame-based things, but maybe now it can be resurrected and be just so great. and Everybody can right. benefit. Well done, honey. Well done. Nice oh my ideas. gosh, that is awesome. Well, thank you so much, Christy, for sharing and for listening to the podcast. I really do appreciate that for sure. So it's just, uh, you know, Christy and I have been on our IADEP board, our eating disorders education board locally, and it's been great getting to know her there. But this is the real first time that I've actually been able to talk to Christy just one-on-one -on -one, or actually two-on-one, -on -one, if we think about that, because here we are talking about what you've been been through during the pandemic, and it has been really chaotic. In fact, chaos as a definition being a confused mass or mixture or so many things happening at once, it's hard to sort out. I would have sure. to say that your situation really matches that definition. So who wants to start with this and where do we even <laughs> want to begin? Chronologically, what, what do you guys think here? Right. Go for it, honey. Uh, yeah, let's see. So even before, like before the pandemic started, we had, um, 
we'd actually had my sister-in-law yeah. living with us because we have, so we have three young adult kids, right? Age right. 21, 25, and 29 now. Four years apart. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's kind of been like a revolving door, which I think is pretty typical with a lot of families. Certainly a lot of friends of mine, you know, young adults move out, they'll go to you know, college and come back for summer right. or, you know, move into apartment for a little while and come back. And so that kind of thing had been um, happening. Mm -hmm. um, and we had two of the kids out, one, one at home. And then um, my sister-in-law from California had called and she, uh, she had been laid off and then she had gotten a job up in Seattle for you know, temporary period of time, and was asking to live with us, and we're like, sure, we've got you know, yeah. like <laughs> she's family, we've... she's coming over, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. So, um, so and that was really fun, actually. And then, so we adopted a sixty-year-old girl. We did is what we did. <laughs> Yeah. Sister-in-law exactly. meaning Lester's sister or no 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 it's Christy's sister. My brother's wife. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, yeah. Sister's yeah. wife. Okay. Or brother's yeah. wife. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. And it was just she, her. It was her and one of our kids and their significant other. So at the time, the our smallest number was we had five adults living in the house at any given time. Right. With two dogs and one cat. Oh. And, and then three hundred square feet of space, right? Yeah, but it's a big 2,300 square feet. It's, it, there, there's a lot of <laughs> space to it, and there's individual rooms, and it's a vaulted ceiling, and all those kind of things. And it's it's a polygon community, so your neighbors are close. So we're used to incursions on our personal space anyway. You know, if I can put my hand on one house and my foot on the next door neighbor's <laughs> house, then it's it's one of those things where we know what people are doing. You know, um, and so yeah, after Patsy was here, then. Then it started to come. <laughs> okay, so that a lot was the of calm. That was the calm part. When, that, was that was the calm, the calm part. before yeah, the yeah. chaos, right? It, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was right when it. So you agreed. Sure. Wonderful. We have vaulted ceilings. We'll just stick you up on the ceiling. <laughs> It'll be great. Right. You can come come over. But then some, <laughs> and then the unexpected happened. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then we entered into lockdown and. Um, yeah, and then she ended up essentially being displaced because, like, you know, all of our kids were coming home, right? Um, but fortunately, it ended up being a really well, good, yeah. good thing for her because she she was working from home, and she ended up actually being able to go back to right. California. And you know, with she her. had other options. It's not like we were her only option, and totally. we said, "Oh, sorry, you're gone." <laughs> it was like there there were backup plans involved. This was just the best first option is what it boiled down to. We didn't kick her to the curb. There were a couple of days I thought about kicking her to the curb, but we didn't kick her to the curb. So. That's family what? chaos. Well, <laughs> what, okay, so I got to back up here just a second. Ask, like, what, how did your kids decide that they needed to come back home? Because, uh, let's see, one was already living at home, right? But yeah. the other two were out of the house, right? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So really with the shutdown... Right. We had um, our youngest was at uh, Central Washington University and, you know, everything shut down. And so she came back, um, you know, theoretically at the time it was going to be what, six weeks or whatnot, and then head back to school. Obviously, uh, that did not happen and and it's extended and mm -hmm. and she is here still. Yeah. Um, yeah. A year later. Yeah. 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 So they're not having classes in person at all at uh, CWU this year. They are. Um, However. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Because of the lockdown, because of it being central, because of a number of different things, a number of components that went into this, the programs that she was affiliated with have had have undergone some drastic change. Mm. And so um, uh, our, our youngest wants to be a theater teacher is, is what our aspirations are. And uh, Central was a great draw for her because of the educational department. Mm -hmm. um, and within that, we were hoping that there would be a really good theater department because it's got a really great music department. 
And then after this whole thing, they lost funding, they lost teachers, they lost any number of different things that happened. And of course, it caused us to put everything into a state of flux. So Julia decided that this year she's going to take the quarter off Mm -hmm. and then reassess and go from there. Going to another school, transferring to another school as a senior is nobody's idea of a fun time. I know. Um, wow. So it's it's a situation right now where she's kind of, in in my opinion, she's gearing up to go back to Central, even though it's a shell of what it was before, uh-huh. and she's going to make the best of a bad situation. So, which it sounds like this this family did because that even that is just it's not the typical situation with a kid returning home and then going back in the fall. Which this is uh, you know I've had. A couple of clients who were uh, kids that went off to college, but they went back in September. Yeah. They went back to school, mm-hmm. but yours did not because of the lack of funding and because, hey, I need to redirect, right? Well, yeah, and and, right. and that's one of the things that we, <laughs> if I can speak for us yes. for a second, um, <laughs> uh, it, it's a constantly changing topography. Um, we don't know what's happening tomorrow, and so we're just kind of constantly playing improv this this whole thing has been a a year of yes anding you know Mm -hmm. and and uh it's it's been okay so what do we do now okay Mm -hmm. so what do we do now oh okay so we'll do this now right and it's been kind of fun and kind of chaotic so it's it's been nice that way but um i think we started to get a sense of things like the world was happening at us as opposed to us having like life play out kind of thing. And so there was a lot of adjusting that had to do to be done. And I think what happened to Jules is a a fantastic example of you really don't know what's about to happen. So just be prepared. So yeah. Yeah. And one example of, of that kind of yes ending. I think that's a really good description of what this last year has been like. Um, Because each of our three kids also have significant others. And for one reason or another, right, different in each case, um, each of them ended up being displaced. And so Mm -hmm. now we have um, not only our, you know, three young adult kids, but also their significant Significant others. others. So there's four adult couples in our house right yeah. now. And along the way, we picked up another stupid dog. Yeah. So. A stupid dog. No, there's no <laughs> such thing. <laughs> okay, it's not a stupid dog. It's a Yorkie, which by <laughs> definition has a teeny tiny brain. And so there's not much information that you can pack in there. And so I'm certain that, well, okay, so the joke of the family is she knows her name. Her name is Sophie, right? But she has no brain. So that means she's got to be going around constantly just reaffirming herself, just constantly going, hi, I'm Sophie. Hi, I'm Sophie. Hi, I'm Sophie. I'm Sophie. Hi, I'm Sophie. And that's the only thing that can get through. So when I call her stupid, it's not a derogatory term. It's that she's got too much Sophie going on in there is what it really kind of boils down to. So Limit. she's got some she's got some limits, but isn't she cute though? Yorkies she's are adorable. just so cute. She is adorable. <laughs> she yeah. is. Sure. And she knows it. And she is very aware of it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So the first kid came home fairly early on, and then the significant other sort of followed a later at a later time when the significant other had some displace displacement yeah. problems as well. Yeah. Right. Wow, what cool parents are you to allow significant others to kind of hang out? Are you a kind of a commune household or what? What's going on there? I know what it it's, like. it's got it's got it's got a hippy dippy feel to it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Dippy. Yeah, a little hippy dippy like feel to it. Yeah. Hippy wigwam. I'm all <laughs> over that. I love that. So. <laughs> well, so what happened after that? I'm so totally intrigued about like the whole progression of you've got you and Chris, Lester and Christy, you, mm-hmm. you've you got uh, the sister-in-law who may or may not be there, but she eventually transitioned out. And then you've yeah. got <laughs> daughter, youngest, who is uh, come, back come back from Central, from Central. Washington. Right. So what happened next? Was that when we got Ben and Kelly after <laughs> that? So. I so, yeah, think so. So yeah, so then, so then yeah. Ben was attending PLU 
and he he had a bad experience and it was it was a period of time where he just needed to step back and take a breath you know and uh during that period of time his significant other Callie who had started at PLU as a neurobiologist mm -hmm. yeah uh decided to become a seamstress so a little bit of switch in direction there just a bit um, yeah um which the, by the way she's theater doing, also yeah um and and theater design yeah um i i would probably even mm -hmm. plug her etsy site to be honest with you she's doing so well with it it's ridiculous wow. um but then we got them back and so that was that was one of the first times that we dealt with a little bit of a communication breakdown um mm -hmm. which was cool in in because it really tested our resolve to keep communicating all the time. You know, that that's how you deal with stuff as you talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, kids will tell you, I'm not happy unless I'm bitching about something. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, Ben had had his trials and tribulations. Callie was going through some immense change and everybody was in the house all of a sudden. And so everybody really liked each other, which was great. But you could tell that there were definitely points where it's nobody wanted to be around anybody anymore mm -hmm. and so those were the points where we started to see a little bit of ruffled feathers but I, again mm -hmm. i mean it's it's not like ruffled feathers yeah. you know mm -hmm. it, um they're really cool people yeah i think it just really so. boils down to like you know i mean thinking about the lockdown is one thing right but then when it starts to go on and on and on right <laughs> you know nobody intended to all be living together right um yeah. and and there's you know it, as much as we try to give each other privacy and space it's still pretty limited right so there you know yeah there quickly really isn't much privacy yeah and, it goes it goes from a camp yeah. over to oh you're still here <laughs> um you know and uh <laughs> right. and those those days just keep stacking up on each other and so yeah. now are, are they going to be listening to all this they already know how you guys feel right because everything's all open and yeah. hippie dippy wigwam at your yeah. place anyway yeah. okay right. great just want to make sure yeah no there's no secrets no surprises in this house oh, <laughs> right. Right. not well, anymore <laughs> can i ask can i ask how many bedrooms you have and how many like safe spaces and spots that you have in your in your place uh well we've got the four bedrooms, four bedrooms and, yeah. and and three mm -hmm. bathrooms, um, and then there's downstairs. And downstairs mm -hmm. is segmented into the kitchen, the dining room, a living room, and then the big living room. Uh -huh. um, and so there have been, when, when Christy had to go into telehealth all the time, and that, that became her, her weekly existence, that was the only time that we felt where it was hard to find time to be by yourself, at least for me, um, because she went into lockdown to do her job up in our bedroom. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, downstairs is attached to the kitchen. And mm -hmm. so there's constantly people coming in and out doing this, that, and the other. And so that was, that was the only period of time. And it lasted, it lasted for a chunk of time, but it wasn't forever. Um, that was the only period of time where I felt like, uh, can I please just be left alone for a second? <laughs> right. Um, right. But yep. it passed. Yeah. Well, so, and then I guess, no, so Lester, you were working at, were you in the restaurant business at the time where COVID broke out and decided no. not? To, okay. No, I got lucky for me. <laughs> uh, lucky for me. I, I had my, my exit from the restaurant industry right before this whole thing happened because Christy and I were talking, uh, uh, I, I unfortunately was a bit of a workaholic um, and, and I was a slave to the restaurant 100%. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result, uh, had this happened, I would have been working seven days a week, dealing with nothing but complaints, trying to keep people from quitting and trying to hire people when there's nobody to be hired. Uh, and then all of the food problems that were going on during that period of time. Right. I mean, I yeah the sympathy pains alone for what you know my fallen brethren have gone through in this period of time um just keep you up at night but no i was able to get out before the pandemic which is wow thank god 
Yeah. Great timing, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. and we'll yeah. get a little bit back to what Lester is doing now with his time and uh, in his culinary skills in a little bit. But uh, so you've got now your son came home as well mm -hmm. as your youngest child, yeah. uh, your youngest yeah. daughter. All right. So now you've got Lester and Christy, and you've got <laughs> two couples. Is that right? Right. And Julia you've got and four Paul bedrooms. and <coughs> Ben and Callie. Right. All right. Yeah. yeah. And then, then our oldest <laughs> came back. Yeah. And so, yeah, so she and her significant other um, had been, they actually did their lockdown um, living in another, another house, actually his, uh, his parents' house, and they were living somewhere else. So they actually had a whole probably 2,500 square feet all to themselves during lockdown, yeah. right? Oh. Um, but then that, yeah, enter yes and again, <laughs> right? Okay, so we're going to sell the house. <laughs> his parents decided to sell the house, yeah. and they had to leave, like, within a matter of weeks, right? Week. So, it was like a week. Yeah, so yeah. they moved back in, so then, you know, enter fourth bedroom, fourth couple yeah. right oh now fortunately for us he's he's incredibly talented and um he jumped in right away and said okay if there's four couples living in this house like we need more shelves we need more <laughs> shelves right so he like jumped into the garage and like started this project and we have the best set of like of storage and shelves in the garage now <laughs> plus a frat fridge which we lovingly <laughs> yeah he also to. he also spearheaded going out and getting another refrigerator for us <laughs> because we were running out of space really really quick so now we have a refrigerator in our garage which is filled to the brim with beer and frozen pizza and so we call it our frat fridge <laughs> and so it, it is it is a thing right now so it's it's part of how we cope so yeah. You know, I never would have thought about that about the fridge. Now I know that Christy, I know. You know, she she uh, mentioned the recycling and the garbage situation, which I hadn't thought of. But now I'm thinking, wow, right. yeah. If you have eight people, eight adults in a household, how are you going to store the food? Right. It's 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 so much more complex than even that, yeah. because I've got I've got a vegetarian, um, who I love, uh, <laughs> and and then I've got a son-in-law. Uh, who is, he hates vegetables. Well, actually he eats them, but he's offended by the idea of meatless burgers and things. So let's just call him an alpha carnivore. Let's, let's just refer <laughs> to him that way. And then you've got all the other peccadilloes of all these other dietary restrictions, including one of my children who has the diet of a 10 year old, um, mm -hmm. you know, macaroni and cheese and nothing with flavor. <laughs> um, and so trying to create a meal plan for everybody, uh, was, was challenging. And, and so I took the right. restaurant approach to it and I became a short order cook for like two meals a day. And so I took orders, but only based on what my inventory was. So, <laughs> sure. well, yeah. And speaking of inventory, who bought the food? Like who is purchasing this food and, mm -hmm. and how are people working? I know Christy was doing therapy. Yeah. She was doing telehealth. Yeah. Like we all were in the therapy yeah. world, but right. how are people able to pay for food and contribute to this kumbaya household hippy dippy wigwam existence that you have? Her. It's all, yeah. it's all because of Christy. Yeah. For the, wow. for the yeah. most part. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> bought the food i you know the kids would pitch in and you know add they make their own trips and and bring back specifics but at the core of the groceries were we yeah. provided we um we yeah. we've wow. we've been going through a lot of change and and mm -hmm. um one of the greatest things that ever happened to us was my wife made a a profoundly difficult decision to leave social work and go back and get her master's and, and go into business for herself. Mm -hmm. And if you know Christy, then you know that the way that she does things is to the nth degree. Um, and so uh, she struck out and got a great business off the ground and then has a number of other different irons in the fire too. And I know. Uh, those, those things have been providing income for the family. And so wow. it's, it's on her back. 
that we're doing this. Yeah. And you look so calm, Christy. I, I just have to pause Drugs. for just a second. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, that is that is something that has increased during during the pandemic. Christy, what is your secret, dear? You look so very composed. And every time we have met on, you know, for our board meetings, which has been about two or three, four times right. since the pandemic has started, you've always looked so very calm. What is your, what can you just share one of your secrets about remaining so calm during all of this chaos? <laughs> I really have developed a a strong like self-care program for myself and just, you know, a lot of it is um, around um, meditation and mindfulness and journaling and, um, you know, getting out into nature. And so like, I've got a number of things that I do kind of, you know, to, to take care of my mind, body and spirit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, and I'm pretty committed to it, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Yeah. So that's that, great. that helped tremendously. Right. And that's, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I think between, you know, like Lester was talking about the yes and, which is, you know, a real, you know, aspect of just kind of uh, adjusting <laughs> to life as it unfolds. Right. And then trying um, to work as best as possible on, you know, focusing on, you know, this one moment, right? Like this is the way it is right now, right? Let's, uh, you know, all the, all the challenges are there. All of the, um, opportunities are there too. And, you know, I'm all about letting, you know, letting myself feel right. We, Lester bitches a lot. I do. <laughs> right? I do. Yeah. <laughs> that helps. Yeah. You don't have to wonder what I'm thinking. You don't right. have to. <laughs> Is it, so is we it kind feel of like, what we like, feel, <laughs> and then we also like focus on you know what are the what are the great aspects, right? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, how awesome is it that we could actually have all four of us couples living together? Yeah, there's some right? really good that shit that came out of this. Do yeah, get along. Right? Yeah. Well, I'd like and, to hear about that shit. I mean, could you just tell me about some of the good well, stuff that came I'll, out I'll, of I'll, the situation? Yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you straight up. One one of the coolest things for for Christy and I that that it, you don't you don't get a chance to ask for stuff like this, but going downstairs and seeing all three of your kids' couples sitting down and playing games together yeah. that they're finding time in their schedules to do. Okay, so what do you got going on this week? Well, I got this going on, and I got this going on, and I got this going on. Okay, cool. Thursday, D&D, &D, are you down with that? Yeah, that'd be awesome. And so they all sit down, and they play Dungeons and Dragons, or they play Catan, or they play whatever game that they pull out, and they get along, yeah. and it's insane to watch. It's just so cool. Yeah, so, that's I mean, really that's awesome. that's been a huge mm -hmm. part of how we've been coping. And then the other thing, and Christy when she talks about her, her regiment, one of the things that she doesn't talk about sometimes is the fact that she's not a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. um, and so this has been a great opportunity to witness that she practices what she preaches. Mm -hmm. um, and that mindfulness approach, the idea of giving honor to an emotional response, but not letting an emotional response control your response. Mm -hmm. um, that's been a huge component to us succeeding during this period of time. And that's been one of the greatest things to watch is all six of the young adults living with us have done battle with it and have improved at it and are doing much, much, much better. And so that's been, that's been cool as hell. Yeah. yeah. And so you're living what we tell our clients to do, right? And here we are right. just being able to to live in the moment, be mindful and everything. But you're actually living that and you're affecting, Christy, you're affecting your family and inspiring apparently them to do the same stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. I, you know, I. She was just again, meditating the, right then. I'm sure. She was, was, uh, there was, it was an ohm pause. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was, I was, I was eavesdropping the other day. We yeah. had, we had one of our kids' uh, friends over, and there've been a lot of friends coming into and out of the house now that restrictions have, have started to to relax. 
and uh, listening to our kids talk about how, yeah, my mom's kind of a big deal. She's humble about it, but she's kind of cool. You know, it's it's a good thing to hear. You know, it makes you feel good. Oh my gosh, I'm very proud Alrighty. of her. <laughs> that is that is amazing. So then, and then I I guess your kids have and and significant others have worked yeah. through the pandemic, and you've had a couple of different times that you've had some COVID scares. Is that correct? <laughs> a couple oh, of different yeah. times. Yeah. A dozen? Did like, we hit a clean dozen? I don't know. I can think of eight for sure. Yeah. There was a there was a stretch of. Every six or seven week. weeks in every a row week. where yeah. every week somebody was coming home and saying, you know, either, Hey, my workplace shut down or three coworkers, uh, tested positive, yeah. And we were, yeah, some, you know, combination <coughs> of us were getting COVID tested. Some every variation week. <laughs> Six How many COVID weeks. tests did you guys have to get? I have not had well, any. I, I've heard, oh. heard they're pretty intrusive. How many have you had to get? The only person who had we to had have it. You and I had two. Had two. And Ben. Mm -hmm. Ben's the only other right. one who had two. Um, and so what we went with is we went with the, uh, what do you call it? Which, um, it's the herd, not the herd immunity, but when. Right. When one person in a community gets tested and then that's like your sample. Yeah. Test. Basically. So we were, yeah. we were able to, so like we wouldn't all eight of us go down and get tested. Right. Uh, the person and their significant other is typically who would get tested. And mm -hmm. if they both came back negative, then we had a pretty good understanding yeah. that we were going to be fine. Um, yeah. At least that's how we went through it. And yeah, it's, it's fairly intrusive. So. And fortunately, it, every time we got tested, it was negative. Every so time. We never yeah. had a positive. Test. You never so. had COVID come yeah. into your home. No, no, not knowingly. No. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Well, yeah, not like you would want to invite it in and you know open up right. the door for it. But <laughs> hey, yeah, I got some Ritz crackers great. and COVID. Come on over. I can. Yeah, no. crackers and COVID. <laughs> right. So, so you have had your uh, the what, people were going out into the world and getting contact with the world, and there mm. were COVID scares, but it actually did not permeate your house. For me, I find that, I mean, on a spiritual level, a little bit, wow. Okay. Like who, what was protecting you and your household from COVID? That is just an amazing sort of a story. What do you guys think about that? I Had we gotten it, we would have dealt with that too. I, I, I mean, honestly, um, I mean, I think everybody was really careful. Yeah. And, we, we were surrounded yeah. by really cool people who, pay attention to stuff mm -hmm. and do what they need to do to respect being part of being part of the household. You know, I, yeah. everybody did their due diligence. Yeah. They, they washed their hands. They wore masks. They maintained social distancing. They didn't put themselves into tricky positions. Mm -hmm. You know, I only had to have one conversation one time about, listen, if you guys allow COVID in, you're not killing yourselves. You're killing me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the cross section, you know, that I'm where the Venn diagram meets, you know, that so, so you got to watch out for me, please. And I only had that conversation one time. And from that point on, everybody was just over the top, cautious and cool, but yeah, we're also blessed. There's no getting away from that. So. Yeah, I like I like using that word to describe the situation because it really was a blessing that this was yeah. happening all around you and you have people, emissaries, going out into the world and coming back into your home and not bringing COVID yeah. in there. So I think that is really a blessing for sure. Yeah, uh, I do want to ask you how you handled the privacy stuff. Like, okay, so, and I can imagine with the way you described your house, you've got the, probably the bedrooms upstairs and then the, the living area downstairs and then exactly but, okay so so the bedrooms are all upstairs and so yeah. like what is it <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to ask you guys just to elaborate on how you kept things private quiet what what kind of tips or tricks to, do you have for anybody who is experiencing having kids at home that are not planned and there are privacy concerns so <laughs> White noise machines, <laughs> uh, uh, ceiling fans, uh, the vent fans, and closing doors. Um, those now are all air conditioners, yeah, air conditioners uh, yeah. things like that. We've got like four portable air conditioners in yeah. the house. Yeah. So um, yeah, so we 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 bathe ourselves in white noise is one of the easiest ways to get away with it. 
So. Which is such a simple solution when you think about it. Because, and it's actually effective because it, it does sort right. of calm the noise of your mind too. White noise. True. Yeah. Right. Unless you're trying to talk over it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's funny. I didn't used to be able to sleep with yeah. white noise. Yeah. And now I can't sleep without it. Used to drive her like, nuts. I yeah. will have the, you know, essentially like the bathroom fan on or the air conditioner on and and yeah, that's how I can sleep. I wonder if that's part of your mind quieting, you know, when yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's just a, well, it's, an attrib uh, it, it's attributed to the mind adjusting for sure, because the, the mind yeah. can adjust to these things if you're willing, you know, and I think that yeah. part of the meditation practice, if I'm not mistaken, Christy, is that willingness to, to just embrace what is and what comes. And right. if that's white noise and it has to be there, the mind really does have to be open to change and to deviations, flexibilities in, in, um, in practices for sure. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Cause do you, what's your funniest, well, what's your funniest story <laughs> that you have to tell about lockdown? If you can, or about this whole chaotic <laughs> and it's kind of still going That's on. on yeah. You. But yeah. do you have a funny story that you, you would like to tell? That there's there's, kind a, of the most there's 110 thing things that have happened every single day. <laughs> it, it's the interaction of everybody, the way that everybody yeah. plays together, the, the, the silliness that comes out of being mm -hmm. around each other all the time yeah. become these non-translatable moments of just sheer hysteria <laughs> sometimes. And, and it's just crazy to think about different things being what excites. When we, in, when we entered Sophie into the picture, the little stupid Yorkie, <laughs> that was probably some of the best <laughs> pure comedy that the house had seen in a long time, just watching everybody interact with this thing without a brain, but all the cuteness on the planet. Um, and that was really, really cute and really funny. The other thing that I'll let you know is we all had these coping mechanisms. And this is just the way everybody is in our family is we don't, we don't tend to swallow things when we're processing them. I mean, that's, that's an initial reaction, sure. But mm -hmm. for the most part, when you're coping with something, yeah. what's what blurts out of your mouth is what you're you're ex, you're experiencing. And so we don't spend too much time dressing it up. Mm -hmm. So some of the reactions to the COVID tests were just blatantly funny, mm -hmm. um, and and just watching somebody come back after being. Uh, uh, ben in particular driving back and he wouldn't look anybody in the eyes <laughs> and just said, I I've been violated and <laughs> went upstairs <laughs> just in and of itself, those yeah. little moments, those, and, and there's so yeah. much tension that those moments release mm -hmm. that they're a yeah. lot funnier when you're here than when I'm telling you about them, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so true. So yeah. That, I mean, to be so, honest with you, yeah. Sophie and her non-brain and <laughs> Ben's violation. And right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's not the title of the book, but right. yeah. Well, it, could be, it could be the family drama, Sophie's no brain and Ben's violation. And Ben's violation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Well, now I'm wondering, is Sophie, Christy, is Sophie your, your dad's dog? Is that the dog that you're talking yeah. about? Oh, okay. yeah. Because there's so we... something chaotic that happened with your dad during this whole thing too, <laughs> right. right? Right. 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 So, I. Uh, yeah, in fact, that's one of the talk about COVID tests that was during the six, seven weeks that we were constantly getting tested, right? Um, I literally was like coming uh, out of telehealth, walking downstairs, getting ready to yeah. um, get in the car and go east of the mountains because my dad had been diagnosed with, um, with cancer bladder and kidney cancer yep. and um, was going in for surgery. And I am literally coming down the stairs and I hear we have bad news. Yep. And I was like, Whoa, what now? Yep. Right. And just another one of those situations where somebody had come home from work and three coworkers had tested positive and, you know, and here I am needing to get east of the mountains to be there for my 93 year old dad who has cancer. Right. And so. Yeah. The definition up, of autoimmune yeah. deficiencies, you know? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 
So we ended up that being halted, got tested, fortunately negative, waited the period of time and then was able to get back over there. Um, Mm. So, yeah, so he uh, he had surgery and then at the that was in the fall, actually. And then the beginning of this year, he and his wife moved into a long term care facility in the Tri-Cities area and they couldn't take their little dog Sophie with them to long-term care because they're like up on the third floor and and Sophie literally is like a little shadow so that you know you will step on her and Mm -hmm. they cannot like yeah they they can't uh have her underfoot like that um so sure of course (laughs) well yeah everybody's coming into the house yeah that was another dog that's that's (laughs) that that that, it sucked it sucked because because we go out to see Bob and Jeannie and, and we're down in Euphrida, which is, you know, honeymoon central. Um, and, and, uh, they've got this stupid little dog running around the place and it just connects with me for some reason or whatever. And she says that at one point she says that she doesn't know what's going to happen with Sophie. And I turned to Christy and I go, God damn it. We're going to take the dog. (laughs) And, then Jeannie starts crying because she was like, oh, thank you. Thank you. And I'm like, great. Now, now we got the dog. Now, now, really now we got the, the dog. dog. <laughs> so we brought the dog home and everything. And everybody who asked, they go say, uh, who decided to take the dog? And every, all of our kids were like, oh, obviously mom, because dad would never take it. I'm like, no, it was, I caved in. Actually. So yeah, yeah it's totally me. So I don't know. I I think he may be uh, just sort of trying to hide his his affection for Sophie. I don't. What do you think about it as a as you a think? psychological defense? I am a cat That's person. Fine. Okay, I am a cat person. I have been too. given dogs. <laughs> Aw, but she's so cute. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he, walking I think around he really likes her uh, more than he's willing to admit. And wow, so you this family. Has 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 been so strong and stayed together and has gone through so much. Um, I guess if you were having to say about anything that you, either one of you or both of you, uh, what, what is it that you, that you think uh, held you and kept you going, kept you optimistic and saw you through all of this stuff that happened during this time? Yeah. Well, I just, yeah, I think bottom line is, um, you know, we're a house full of people that love and care for each other, right? And, you know, I think any one of us would do anything for the other. And I think, you know, that just, yeah, like bottom line, okay, you know, what's the next, you know, what's the next punch? What's the next thing that's going to happen? And, and um, yeah, how do, how do we take care for each other? of each other right because you know it's it's been a community right love and community right it does sound like kind of like uh christy and lester's commune right it it, it is kind of communal when you think about it right yeah yeah community love even love for sophie the brainless dog and the violated and the vegetarian and the person who doesn't like vegetables at all the alpha carnivore (laughs) alpha yes yeah you have you almost have the makings for like a comic strip or a sitcom in all of this you know when you have the uh, the alpha carnivore the brainless dog the violated Ben, you know, the vegetarian. You have all these. We gotta articles. stop saying the violated Ben. We gotta, we gotta, we, that's because, the one thing that if he hears, he's not gonna like. The one thing. We oh, said it. It's, it's almost, I know. It. That's right. It's almost he's like a bad, oh, It's no. almost like a bad flavor of Ben and Jerry's ice cream, right? Yes. It's yeah. Right. Violated yeah. Ben ice cream. Right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, so I wanted to give, of course, Christy, you, you have started some stuff during the pandemic that I find really interesting and didn't know about until we started talking about doing this podcast. And so what she has is something, and I'm going to try and share my screen here. So this is exactly what I was going to say about technology here. And so this is the green zone. Ah, yes. Can you see it? Yes. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. so this is from your website. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about this? This is something that you started mm -hmm. during the pandemic. Ish. Right. Well, kind of. Yeah. 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 So Green Zone um, actually is a, so we, we started the business um, during this last year, 2020. Um, but the, the partnership is Ted Ryle, Rochelle Futch, and myself. And we all got together um, back in 2017 yeah. um, to yeah. work with uh, Hope Human Services at the time in Tacoma because they started a crisis stabilization program for people with developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. And Ted, had his brainchild is uh, the green zone, right? That, that model. And essentially it's, it's uh, like a model for caregivers how to direct their energy so that it turns on its head the natural tendency to provide all your attention and support during times of crisis and then kind of pull back and rest or coast um check out during you know the green zone time right when when people are um you know doing well and and um you know eating praying resting <laughs> playing, right? Um, and so, so then in, in 2017, we started working with Hope Human Services. And at the time, we were using um, a set of skills developed by Julie Brown, which is a um, modified DBT skills for people with developmental disabilities. And the more we started working with the Green Zone, the more the three of us were like, gosh, we really want to like, we really want to create our own skills here. Uh, and so then enter pandemic and Rochelle was actually in North Carolina. So the three of us got on the, you know, got on Zoom like once a week or so and started really creating um, and expanding the Green Zone program. And so now we have a whole set of skills and, and uh, nature metaphors and um, all kinds of things. They really fleshed program. it out. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. amazing. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we just love that for sure. I've got a, another picture of, of that and I, I love it because um, the picture here, oh, where did it go? Oh. Well, I did have a picture of, oh, there it is. Yeah, it yeah. kind of just yes. covers the whole yes. screen here. Right? I'm feeling good. <laughs> this is the perfect time to help me learn new things. When you're in the green zone, you're yeah. able to learn those new things. Poor Lester is is sort of blanked out, but I, I like it for Christy <laughs> right? and I because we, we're we showing up and, um, you know. I don't mind so much. It's okay. <laughs> we can just say that this is Lester in the middle there. And he's yeah, like, there you go. Up. Right. There A lot you more go. hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's really wonderful. I, I I was stoked to see that and caregivers really do need support and they don't, they're not always in the green zone. They're sometimes in the red and the yellow zones and they need help and support. So I appreciate yeah. that you have that, that resource for people. And I'll put the link down in the description for this video and in the show notes for people who are listening on iTunes. And so I love that. And then you also, I don't know when the the diary the diary this oh, yeah. there's there goes lester again we're we're blocking his head but that's okay he's he's blocked and now he's become an way. owl there you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah so is this is and i i know you've talked to me about this before it is a it is a journal but i didn't uh, i didn't know that it had such a good harry potter sort of reference it with right? the whole owl like tell us about this this journal internal wizardry yeah, absolutely. So that was a, a a blessing of this last year too. Is that um, well, part of my my own personal self care plan is is really you know working with my dreams, right? And and looking at um, you know writing down my dreams and kind of reflecting on them and and really pulling from them um, what kind of you know information that it's telling me about my waking life, right? Um, and my sister, um, Janice, who co-authored the Dream Reflection Journal with me, um, she, in the midst of the pandemic, decided to um, 
to teach a dream class, right? So I actually, I took the class with her and of course, you know, I've been, um, she's been teaching me about dreams since I was in elementary school, right? <laughs> but it was a really nice opportunity to like take part in this class. And then afterwards, uh, we kind of put our heads together and like, gosh, you know, there's a lot here that we would like to, you know, put together in, you know, we kind of have a, a larger plan of um, pulling together um, different approaches to work with dreams in a mindful way, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and actually put together a larger book. The Dream Reflection Journal is is kind of the, the first um, step towards that. So mm -hmm. we wanted to put together um, a journal that I use. In fact, I've got it right here. It's almost completely full of my own dreams <laughs> and reflections. Oh um, so we wanted to put together a journal that the two of us would enjoy using. Um, and so that's internal wizardry. Yeah. So kind of the idea of like, really, that we have so much wisdom within us that, um, that we can tap into by working with our dreams. That is just so cool. And especially because with, with, uh, with dreams I, in, and with anything really is the first step is noticing, right? So if you're going to do some dream work, the first step is going to be noticing what's showing up and this journal can help you to, 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 to write it down. Right. Cause I know people, some people, and I know this is true for my, my husband and I, who I'll bring up in a minute. Uh, yeah. We have these dreams and these dreams we don't remember or we don't write down. Sometimes I voice record them, oh, but I, I like the idea yeah. of them being contained in, in a journal because pen to paper is so important to be able to just do right. and describe things. So yeah. uh, I know I just love the, the way it looks and I have been meaning to get, in fact, I remember us talking about it and I wrote it down probably on some board uh, discussion notes that I threw back into the thing <laughs> over there and I never picked it up. And so now I actually have the link and I'm going to put the link in the show notes and also in the description for YouTube. And I hope people will check it out because there's a free okay. preview on Amazon. It's on Amazon for sale and it just looks like a wonderful tool. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so true though, too, because um, even, you know, I mean, I've been paying attention to dreams, you know, for almost my whole life. And yet I'll go through periods where I'm just not paying attention. Usually I'm pretty busy doing things and, and I won't remember my dreams. Right. And just with that intention, like you were saying, like, if I, if I even just set that intention of like, oh, okay, I want to remember my dream in the morning. Right. And I get into the habit of, even if it's a little snippet, jot it down. Yeah. Right. True. Over the course of a few nights, I, you know, it's almost like your unconscious is like, oh, you're paying attention yeah. here, have some more. Right. And like, yeah. So yeah, you know, it if, really if, builds that way. If you ever want to have a conversation about dreams and uh, that, I mean, that's such a rich subject, especially mm -hmm. if uh, you're into like, for me, I'm into lucid dreaming and I can't do it all the time, but when I'm able to do it, it's just fantastic it's just mind-blowing yeah <laughs> and I never i'm knew... working on that I've, i'm pre lucid but i haven't well i have it... i have i've been <laughs> able to i've been able to fly a bus one time for a couple minutes and then i got so excited i woke myself up oh, oh i want to go to the rainbow bridge <laughs> <laughs> right right that, that was another one <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that. So that is so great. Yeah. That I we we. Do oh, I'd love to talk, to talk about more that. about that with you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Because just even recently during the pandemic, I've actually been able to do it fully to where it's like, mm. oh, this is a dream. It's okay. I can do this. I wonder what's nice. going to happen next. And I'm just like seeing things happen in front of me and knowing it's a dream. It, it's it's a completely different experience. You have no That's fear. Cool. You That's really wonderful. have no fear. Right. So yeah. yeah, I'm kind of geeking out over dreams right now, but please, <laughs> please, if, if you're listening to this and you're interested in, in dreams and tracking your dreams in a really super cool way, check out Christy's book. And, uh, you know, so this couple has been married almost 30 years, yeah. almost yeah. 30. So yeah. you're going to have your anniversary, your 30 year anniversary in November. Yeah. 
Yes. I, I have to ask my husband to come up here if he will, <laughs> uh, because I think he he must have some questions. He's been listening to this in the green green room, <laughs> and, I, and I'm thinking that he probably has some questions to ask or some comments to make. So I'm just going to bring. This is my husband Tim. We have been married. Oh, gosh, how long have we been married, Timmy? Uh, this will be their 22nd year. Nice to meet you too. Nice yeah. to meet you. Me too. I literally am in the green room, as you can see. I That's very cool. Yeah. See that. It's a non-hypocritical green room. You're in That's the green awesome. zone. That's right. That's right. Oh, oh, oh. Zone. Product tie-in. Product tie-in. <laughs> Do you have any questions for Christy or Lester? Or uh, they come up for you? Well, I just, uh, the whole uh, food dynamic there, having to, you know, you got a vegetarian and then you got a metasaurus yeah. and, and yeah. you know, it's like, it's a, lots of frozen pizza. I see that comes in handy because you can pretty much handle everybody with a frozen pizza. <laughs> right. Unless you're not, unless you don't like carbs, right? There's probably something. Well, and it's not the healthiest carbs. of options. Yeah, it's not the healthiest of options. So I try to mix it up as best I can. You know, I'd, I'll, I'll, where it's gone, it, it's evolved. What I what I started doing was noble and completely frustrating because I was throwing a lot of crap away. Um, so now I've gotten to the point where I kind of like do three family style meals a week. And then otherwise I help everybody kind of get what they want out of different things. The, the frozen pizza aspect of our life is definitely for the young adult midnight snack thing. That's mm -hmm. really what those are there for. And so most of the meals have been things like, um, well, we've got a couple of, of fallbacks, but we've gotten some really good family recipes that we use and, uh, and well, some I really think, simple stuff too. I think that's been one of the, one of the most fun things um, for me is as he's come out of the restaurant industry, right? <laughs> like, I mean, you, he knows so much about food and cocktails and everything. Um, but when you're in the restaurant, industry and like you're immersed in that all day when you get home that's the last I do thing not cook. <laughs> you want to no, do i do not want to cook so yeah, having so. him actually out of the industry like it has been so fun to watch him be creative in the kitchen yeah again yeah. and yeah i i think that's probably been a huge piece of self-care for you is being creative with yeah, food again, absolutely right? Yeah, so who who is it that makes the margaritas? There was a margarita for your birthday. Uh, okay, so Lester, yeah, so Lester is the the uh, the noble cook, right? Is that yes. the noble chef, and <laughs> he tries to be as noble as he can, and and he, he takes orders. And uh, I do. let's see, do you do DoorDash or anything like that? Any no, 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 no. We we don't like the DoorDash concept. I, I it's fine for people who do their things, but I don't like DoorDash. DoorDash and uh, Uber take a large percentage of the restaurant's profits. It's between 23 and 30% off the top. And Uber and DoorDash don't really pay their drivers very well. Um, it's a great convenience, but it's not something that I'm easily comfortable with. Uh, so as a result, we've done takeout and and uh, a lot of things like that. Now the kids are starting to, to go back out again, which is wonderful. But yeah, for the most part, if they if they were craving a burger, then it was my job to figure out how to make a really good burger for them, you know. And so that's kind of the way that I took it was I was quelling the cravings. So good for you. And and then so I've heard though that uh, in the process, then Lester, you have mastered the German chocolate cake. Tell us. <laughs> well, story yeah. About that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, it it it's a it's it's a laborious cake, and and any of the kids will tell you too. One of the first things that that they know about me is I'm not a baker. I, I'm not smart enough to be a baker. Baking involves a hell of a lot of discipline and a lot of math and both of which in, and, in, and time. time too. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are things that I'm just not readily willing to give up or exercise. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I was not the best algebra student in the world. Not my fault. The girl in front of me was very pretty, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm not fantastic with math or conversions or things like that. I picked up a recipe and modified it for German chocolate cake. I've made it successfully twice now. Christy made it once and it was amazing too, but that doesn't surprise me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really good recipe. And uh, from being, I, I was raised down South. So it's, it's like a bite of home, 
you know. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. And uh, so when's your cookbook coming out? Uh, <laughs> Never. Family? Never. <laughs> um, no, we've, uh, I've been, I have been working on a couple of different things and uh, I'm right now I'm focused more on the history behind cocktails um, is where my mind is going right now. And, you know, if, if you were to ask me what my least favorite thing in the world is, I would tell you without hesitation, it's mimes. I hate mimes. <laughs> um, but the, yeah, <laughs> right. just, just let me know you're in the box. I'll help you get out of the box, but all you got to do is let me know. Um, but right after that is bartenders. Um, and, yeah. and uh, I think they get a lot of stuff wrong a lot. Um, and I really am, I find it intriguing what created the environment in which like the Sazerac came about, you know, that's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of geeky approach to things, but I, I think it's kind of interesting, you know, so. Well, I, I think lots of bartenders, uh, well, I, and so you, what you're saying is uh, bartenders get some stuff wrong, but what you're doing is trying to get it right. So that might be another skill or a way. Yeah, they don't read. Chaos. Yeah, they don't read. They don't so. read. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, gosh. So, if, if somehow we get displaced from our home here, uh, is there room for us? Is there room for us Always. in the vaulted ceiling? And we sure. could, you know, That's we can right. work for cocktails if you yeah. would right. let us. We'll figure something <laughs> Give out. Give us just yeah. a few weeks. My older daughter and and her significant other are actually. Uh, working on a house that they bought in the fall and they're yeah. totally redoing it and they're going to be moving out soon. So, Hey, contact so us. In a couple if anybody so wants a place see. to stay, I'm just opening this up to the world because that's what the right. Seligman family does. You know, you just, guys need you know. a spot. We got a spot. <laughs> so. a spot. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's been certainly great having you here and I appreciate the, the pictures that you sent me with the, uh, the beautiful couple mm -hmm. here. And this was of course taken during the <laughs> pandemic and then, right yes yeah yes. you guys went to the pike place market right there by where they throw the fish yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually we stayed in a hotel that was haunted which was cool oh. yeah uh, down in seattle oh, yeah. in seattle yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. In pioneer square yes yeah. yep we've we've <laughs> stayed in a haunted hotel as well did you stay in a haunted room or just in the hotel where there was a haunted room no, in, it, it was in the hotel with a haunted room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's we didn't we didn't hear anything when we were staying there. But. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Timmy, Timmy and I have a funny kind of Ghostbusters experience at uh, one in Port, Port Townsend. And uh, what was it that we were we were creeping around because we knew where the haunted room was. So we were creeping around right. about midnight. And what was it that we, we heard a couple uh, uh, in the room and what were they saying? <laughs> So this was at the Manresa Castle up in Port Townsend, which is um, fairly well renowned for, for having a couple of haunted rooms. Somebody committed suicide, I believe, in one of the rooms, and somebody else was hung from outside. So you got to pay a little extra to get one of these rooms. And we tried. I tried to get one of those rooms, but it was booked. Uh -huh. So we're snooping around, you know, doing our best Scooby-Doo impersonations <laughs> in the middle of the night. And we could hear them arguing. And the one lady said, you need to be quiet. I didn't pay all this money so you can mess this up for us. <laughs> so I had no idea what they were trying to do. But apparently, you know, maybe maybe the Ghostbusters were there and they were trying to catch them. I don't know. but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, we was, were looking yeah. up in the sky for the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, but we didn't we didn't see it. So yeah, yeah it's yeah. the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. It's, oh, <laughs> they wanted to hear ghost footsteps, not yours. Apparently. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> they were. Yeah, and I was thinking about that, going, well, maybe they thought we were the ghost, and I started to laugh. I don't know why I was laughing. I think because I was wearing flip flops, and so you can't really be quiet. No ghost flops wears flip flops. <laughs> It was in the summertime. That's true. Was, That's true. That's true. It was so true. Yeah, the ghosts don't wear flip flops. They just kind of like float, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, good for you guys. And there you are with your masks <laughs> on, giving it all you got. There you go. <laughs> During the pandemic, beautiful couple, Christy, mm -hmm. Lester. Just thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, any parting words or questions that you guys want to say before we sign off? Again, this has been a really super fun time, and it's the last podcast I have for the year. 
Uh, we're going to be hanging it up and taking a break until September. So it was really super cool to have you on here. Any last words? No, just thank you so much for having us on there. I didn't realize this was going to be your last one. So last, <laughs> last one for the year. Yeah, we, we may or may not come back in September. Uh, we've got a lot of other projects that we're thinking about doing. But um, yeah, uh, this has been great. Thank you guys so much. And and best to you. I, I hear we're coming out of the pandemic and you guys have got it figured out. you got it nailed down. It's awesome what you guys are doing for your family. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll see you. And um, you guys take care. And again, thanks for joining us on Calming the Chaos. Stick around for a little you. bit. Have the a wonderful outro. summer. You as well. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Calming the Chaos. If the information in today's podcast was helpful, please consider subscribing and share it with your friends. You can find this podcast on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and on YouTube. You can also go to my website at www.lokahicounseling.com for more resources for calming your mental and emotional chaos. This includes a CD I created that teaches you how to practice mindfulness in less than 10 minutes. So check it out. Thanks again for listening. And I look forward to sharing my next podcast episode with you. In the meantime, take care.